and welcome to Room Recaps, Room Reviews. Today we are recapping the most anticipated movie of the year, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Normally I don't do these alone, and today is no exception. Um, Got my homie Chris from the MTR Network. What's good, man? What's going on, man? Had to call in the big guns, man. Everybody else hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> it's, that's that's you know that's the only part about being press is I didn't I wasn't able to get it for the entire network, so nobody mm-hmm. else sees the movies before me. <laughs> so it's just like, like eh. yeah, no, uh, that's why. Look, that's why I've gotten I got Tim from um, Seattle helping me with a lot of our reviews because sometimes. Uh, you know, Phenom couldn't make it to some of the ones and I needed to get the review out. So I had to hit him. Sometimes that just happens, man. So right. I feel you on that one. Hey, and real quick side note, I figured out what the problem was. Somehow I was not in the, uh, for, they had me not in the U S uh, market for, uh, iTunes. Oh, see, there you go. No wonder. <laughs> yeah. So that's what was going on. I was having some problems. Look, checking my reviews on iTunes and that's what it was. So little, little, silly, stupid, it's a little su- silly, stupid shit. So yeah, a little behind the scenes. Uh, we stress about that type of shit. Don't, don't forget y'all. Y'all, y'all can always leave us a review. Black astronauts podcast or MTR network. Leave us some reviews. It actually helps. Helps a lot. Um, so we usually start off the, 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 the reviews, um, we're reading our, our, our $10 patrons. Um, but I'm going to talk about something for a minute. Chris can probably attest to this a little bit. Um, if y'all have noticed, um, this is to our patrons, especially, um, Patreon recently sent out an email saying that they were charging more to the patron, um, as an added tax, uh, if you wanted to support a creator, um, they recently went back on that because it was a terrible fucking idea. Um, so if you all are nervous or, you know, thinking about dropping, um, they did go back on it. But I do understand if you, you know, your principles are too high and you don't, you don't want to deal with that. Um, but uh, they did go back on that. So if you haven't checked your email, um, just letting y'all know that, you know, y'all can still support without getting that extra fee. Um, many patrons, uh, creators, have said uh, they would, you know, take on the fee, which is what we have been doing originally. So, um, Chris, you got anything? Because I know you just started a Patreon, right? Yeah. So I did the Patreon because um, we already had uh, our premium on through our site, right, right? So I added the Patreon just just as a extra, thinking it could actually be better. I actually found that it's actually more work for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but then the, but then the, the big when they sent that email out, I. We don't have we didn't have a lot of patrons. Like I have way more premium subscribers through my site, so I think we only had like eight to ten people already oh, right now because okay. I don't push it as much. So I just emailed them was like, hey, yeah, um, I'm gonna give you guys a coupon code end of this month. I'm gonna switch you guys that way you guys can use that and switch over to the the main site, and I'm just gonna shut it down because once Patreon said they did that, that if they are able to do that, yeah, they stopped it this time. They're gonna they're gonna do it. Like, yeah. They're going to come back with it and find some other way. Like their email I read, it was like, we're going to find some way to, there is no other way. Right. There, like somebody's going to have to pay. You're not going to find that money any other way. It's going to be something that they're going to, yeah. So I'm not even trying to deal with it. I'd rather just deal with it myself. I use a plugin that I paid for one, one, one set fee. And now it's just through my regular site. I'd rather handle. And I thought, I honestly thought that it was, more work to the site, but I have to manually update Man. both the site and and add the stuff in there. So I'm like, I might as well just move everybody back over, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just moving all my. I, I'm lucky enough that I don't I, I I started through my site first, but I know that if there were some creators out there that started with Patreon or you or like had the majority of that stuff, or maybe they're not lucky like me and don't have a site already set up with already built, they're screwed. Like you're you're screwed, you're stuck with it, and if you have a ton of subscribers, it's like, you know, I think actually, you know what? I think the ton of subscribers ones, they're fine, they're fine. <clears> fine. Yeah. That's it's, it's, that's what that's what Patreon was going after anyway. That's what they wanted to keep. But if you're in that small that small group and you're you're just getting enough, just like to pay your server fees and things like that, you're gonna be you're screwed. And especially when you are a person of color, 
on that site because it's already hard enough right. getting support. And you're the and the people we go after. This is what I've always worried about with doing premium is my main supporters are other black people. And I also know that, hey, you know, situations happen. Like I we got I have people that hit me up all the time saying, Hey, listen, I have to cancel for a couple months. My my financial situation changed. I tell them all the time, it's like, listen, do what you gotta do. The site will always be here when you come back. But like seeing what patreon did i was like yo you're now charging what was going to end up happening for me was people that went through patreon for me were going to pay more than people that went on the site right yeah 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 and i'm like yo that's fucking stupid so i mean i told people like listen i'm moving you guys over i'm gonna give you a coupon i'm gonna shut it down i'm gonna give it a coupon code i'll run it for like maybe a month or two more but i'm not gonna promote it anymore i'm gonna go back to promoting my own my own stuff it's the best because way, it's man. That's what you have to do. Like, I mean, it's an it's an unfortunate thing, but like when you depend on other places and other other apps and other other companies to do stuff for you, it's and and again, I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing because you have to at some point you have to do that. Like, shit, if my hosting company went down tomorrow, I'm fucking screwed, right? right? So, I mean, there's always going to be some dependent some bit dependence on other people, but yeah, what, what Patreon did there should be like i would highly recommend anybody out there to start looking for something else now yeah that's what I'm, i also wanted to mention we are in the process of trying to find a different avenue um because right now um not even gonna lie all the money that you all have been contributing to us which by the way y'all have been showing out and i i really appreciate this we're way past what our my goal was for the year um and it's only because of you all But we are um, in the process of looking for a different option. We do have a website, so I'm probably going to have to rely on and and hit up the people that I always hit up. Hint, hint. Um, And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll talk after this. Like, I guess I'm going to talk to you about about anyway. So we'll talk after this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So I just wanted to throw that out there and thank you all for your continued support. Like I said, I noticed the movie reviews. I know you want to get to the to hear it, but. You know, I definitely want to take the time to thank all y'all, man. Like, we're small, um, and right now, we hit 40 patrons for the year, and that's amazing, man. Like, that's way more than I ever expected um, at this time, and it's only because of y'all. So, uh, with that being said, let me read off the people that are um, uh, our patrons. So, these are people that are $10 and up. So, these are the people that get the Fireside Chats, the premium shows. They get any new shows. Um, we have a um punisher um review coming out that'll be for patrons for ten dollars and up so all that is being uh added for our patreon and we'll continue when we move over to the site so v williams monty m peter h pasto chanae felt five the homie felt five uh robbie r the lawyer sadita h shalanda w wonga the homie wonga cameron b mr brent Simo. Ashley G, Cho Nilla, Knowledge, Dre, the greatness that is MJ, Donald, Ophelia Ono, Teddy Funk, Charlie Snowflake, and the homie Angela D. Man, that list got longer. I'm I mean, I know I've been on break for a little bit, but y'all been y'all been holding it down. So that being said, let's get into this review. Um, and before before I do that, Chris, I just realized people might not know. The fact that we talk every two weeks and that you have your own network. So if you could um, talk, because this is your first time on the BAP network, other than the Untitled Interview Show. So if you could kind of go into I your network. I, did, I, think, I think I did something else with you guys before. Uh-uh. No, no. You did the Untitled Interview Show. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll believe you. I'll believe mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so could you uh, tell me about your network and what you do over there at MTR? <laughs> Yeah, I run the MTR network, and uh, we are a network of uh, several podcasts. Uh, we have, um, let's see, what do we have now? We have Knowledge. the Insanity Check at the main podcast, where I, we do uh, basically it's politics right now, unfortunately, and that's just because of we live in a society that uh, life sucks. So, uh, so that's what the Insanity Check is. We have fun. We we talk about different things there. Uh, we have Movie Trailer Reviews Podcast, which is our movie review podcast. It was myself and uh, Phenom from Where's My 40 Acres. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the Character Corner, which is our basically our comic book character history show, where uh, Deepom and myself talk about comic book characters, and we give the entire history of them. 
think the last one we did was Batgirls. We actually had Batgirls Part 1 and Part 2. Part, part two. 2 is coming out this weekend. And um, then we have Super Tuesday Recap, which is basically our nerdy comic book uh, TV show recap show and comic book discussion show. Uh, we do all the Arrowverse. We do, uh, I know, uh, Shanna and and uh, the Doctor are going to be reviewing Black Lightning. Uh, they also have a Punisher review that's coming out soon that they recorded. We're now doing uh, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, like, I swear to God, this, this show started <laughs> with us just doing like Asian of S.H.I.E.L.D. and maybe like one other show. I think it was just Asian. It was Asian Shield and Flash. And since Flash, then, yep. I I swear it's it's better to name the shows we don't review now. Like we don't do Gotham, and but I think because that's because Gotham is bad, right? Yeah, like, but Gotham is Gotham's not a good show. Yeah, so I think I think it's, I think it's just Gotham now because we do the Gifted now too. Yeah, which we got. I got to finish watching that for next week. So we got that. Uh, we have Secret Sauce, which is our Black Woman show hosted by uh, Latoya. She. Interviews uh, different black women they have their own businesses, and uh, that's the show just got started up. Uh, I'm list, am I forgetting anything else right now? Oh, Unanimous, Unanimous Decision, our sports show mm-hmm. hosted by D-Palm. We have that there. And then coming next year is, I think we're calling it Ratchet and Drink. That's going to be uh, Jax's new show. It's coming on the network, I think, in 2018. And that's not even getting into all of our premium yeah, shows. That, that's, we have, like, that's the yeah, free stuff. <laughs> that's just the free stuff. And then we have the premium stuff. You know, the, all the and so at, at this point we have different shows. But I don't even know what's coming out each month. It's like whatever, whatever y'all somebody just, does. Y'all just we'll put, out, put a, out. Y'all just put out that Star Wars show out of nowhere, the Rebel show. Yeah. It's like what? Well, look, look yo, at y'all. that that was you know those were recorded like months ago, and uh, Parrish finally got them into me, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna hold these, and we'll when Star Trek comes out, I'll start putting out the Star Wars Rebels episodes you did, and we'll go that way. So um, yeah, so we got to yeah. If it, if it doesn't fall on the main feed, then I'll throw it on the premium. <laughs> and, and, and not to, pre- I mean, we are hardworking individuals, but not to include that you are also on the nerd off with me and Rod every two weeks as well. And that ain't even no shit that, that is benefiting you. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's like, that's, I, you know, I, I know, yeah, I got, that, that reminds me, I got to hit Rod up to say, I can't do it tomorrow. Oh, I, mean, no. I can't do it this week. <laughs> Cause now that I think about it, yo, you're right. It is going to be this week. Like we never really talk about it until like the day of. He's mm-hmm. like, "Yo, can we? Can we?" And I need to hit him up and be like, "We can't do it this week." But yes, yeah, so we got that, and and now I'm starting to do stuff on YouTube now too. So yeah, I'm yeah. trying to expand across all the stuff we have there. So um, yes, yeah, a lot of stuff. Well, you know, like I said, this is one of the guys, and I have a full time job. So oh yeah, and this. just 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 a full time job as well. Yeah, just a full time um, job. So I don't know how I'm doing all this stuff. Go check them out. This is one of the people I go to when I need advice, and it's one of the the Black Cinematic Podcast Universe. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite people. So um, go definitely Thanks, man. definitely check them out, um, and they do good work. Finally, uh, ten minutes in, we can finally get into this damn review. Um, so Star Wars The Last Jedi, directed by Ryan Johnson. Um, you know, they gave George Lucas a writing c- a credit, I guess, because he was creator. Um, Ray was Daisy Ridley. <laughs> Mark Hamill as the, the original Luke Scar- Skywalker. Kylo Ren, Adam Driver, Captain Phasma it was Gwendolyn Christie and a bunch of a host of other people, including the late great Carrie Fisher as Leia. Um what we do on this show is we go around and we kind of talk about what we liked and what we didn't like, and we kind of do a back and forth. So, Chris, what's like one thing that you kind of liked about the Force Awakens? I mean, yeah, about the Last Jedi, Force Awakens. <laughs> right. Uh, I think the biggest thing I like about it is um, this is it's going to make salty do bros upset. It's going to make them so mad. And, and, and I, and it's already happening now. Cause I've already argued with some of them on my YouTube review and they haven't even seen the movie yet. They're already complaining about feminism and shit like that. So yeah, no, uh, I love that. Like this film, if you thought the force awakens did stuff with diversity with having like Oscar Isaacs, John uh, Boyega, Daisy Ridley as something, it goes even further than that. Like they bring in a uh, Kelly Marie trans character yes. who, when they announced that her character was in the film and they were like, Oh, we're bringing in an Asian, you know, an Asian character and she's going to have a role in the film. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Whatever. She's going to be in the film. She's going to be there for like five minutes, whatever. No, she has a significant role. It's actually, she's a major part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, that's great. But beyond that, I would say 
all the female characters in this film make the men look stupid. Yo, they like, don't they don't take any shit. No. Um like and and it's like even Poe, like Poe is a hero. Like people love Poe. People might come out feeling like Poe's kind of an asshole <laughs> right. in this film and had to get put in his place by a couple women a couple times. Couple and, times. Um, it's 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 great and it's necessary and it's so timely when you think about what's happening in Hollywood right now. Right. So uh like the film is so it's so empowering for women almost that I'm like, I can't believe Ryan Johnson not only directed it, but he also wrote it. And I'm like, Ryan Johnson might be kind of woke. <laughs> hey, man, then maybe that's why he got those three new movies. <laughs> that might be why. So that's my biggest thing. Like, it's going to make the people that were really upset in the first film about that, the dude bro, stuff like that, they're going to, it's going to double down on it. And I'm, I'm going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, for me, I would have to say that the, the way it expands the universe, um, with still keeping the storyline and still keeping some of the f- familiar faces that we know, this mm-hmm. this storyline is all over the place and makes the world so much bigger than what it was going in. You know, uh, yeah, it's all over the place. And usually, when you say it's all over the place in a film, right. that's a bad thing, right? But not in this case. It's all over the place, but very deliberate. And I can't remember the last film I saw that had this many. Th- There's like three main threads going on and three main subplots going on at the same time. And they're moving at the same time too. Like there, there's and, no stopping. Right. And they all come, they all converge at the right time. And it's like, it makes sense. It works. And it, it shouldn't. <laughs> no, it, it definitely shouldn't. But that's how you can see Ryan Johnson like used a, a light touch in certain cases. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a point um, in the, in the movie where, where I've heard a lot of critics um, complaining about, um, and I'm, we're not, this is not a spoiler cast. So don't worry guys. I'm not going to get into spoilers, but they said it was too CG heavy and it felt like it was, you probably know the scene I'm talking about, Chris um, on Canto bite. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, so they said it was too CG heavy and I'm like, if that's the only nitpick you can have about this movie, then you know what kind of movie this is. If, if that's what, you, if, if that's what you were thinking about in that, at that point, then you might be doing the movie wrong. You might be watching movies wrong. Right. Right. And yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. I also wanted to say that I think that this might be. Um, Mark Hamill's best turn is Luke. Like I, I liked Luke a lot more and understood him a lot more than I any of the other episodes. Like the other episodes are needed, but this is the Luke that I appreciate. What well, here's you? the thing. I mean, Mark Hamill, that like when he that was, I'm pretty sure those were his first films ever. His first acting films mm-hmm. ever. He's now had decades. Of voice acting, decades of, of 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 really getting in and act like he's got it. So it's like he's now mature. Like he's now he honestly is the Jedi Master now, right? And understands it, and so he can actually pretty much he's living his raps now, <laughs> and so he can do it. And so yeah, he's playing that, you know that he's basically playing almost the Yoda character where he's a cranky, got to take the. The untrained Jedi, young Jedi, or untrained young Force uh, sensitive uh, wannabe Padawan, and he's trying to teach her about the Force. And you know, he's you know, he's good with it. He's funny, right? <laughs> you know, he's he feels comfortable in that moment. And yeah, like you said, this is a this is a good turn for Luke. Um, what's what's something else that you liked about the movie? Um, I like the fact that. I believe Ryan Johnson was trolling us. Oh, and what I mean I by that you, is, I know what you're about to say. In the, what I mean by that is, yeah, like mm-hmm. he, the between the trailers. So it, let's start with the trailers. So in the trailers, you start with that one where Luke says, "This is not going to go the way you think," and then later on, it's uh, Kylo Ren when he says, uh, "You know, uh, like let the past die, kill, kill it. it, kill it." 
that's basically what Ryan Johnson was telling you, trying to tell you what's going to happen with this film. What's going to happen with this film is he's going to open it up where you feeling like this is like, okay, this feels really, really like Empire Strikes Back because the, you know, uh, the, the rebels are trying to escape the, uh, the first order and it just has this Empire Strikes Back feeling to it. But as the film goes on, you start realizing it's like, oh no, this is meta commentary. He's playing on the fact that you think you know what's going to happen, exactly. Just so he can switch it up on you, and 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 things don't go the way you think they're going to go, and that's how it happens throughout this film the entire time. I mean, there's so many little things. Like, there's a scene in that final battle, and I, I was talking to Fino about this when one of the one of the I don't think he's a general on the ground. One of the guys gets up and he walks, and you see what you think is blood, and. And it's not blood. And one of the guys in the trenches says, oh, that's salt. And you're like, oh, oh. okay, I get this now. This is – they're trying to – he, he's actually that, – that was the one little – not a slip up, but he did it on purpose to go, see, you think you know what's going to happen. This you think, you think that I'm taking from Empire Strikes Back or you think I'm making things look like that. It's just only on the surface. Once you get past the surface, you see that – this is a completely like this film is so good. Yes, I'm really excited about episode nine. I'm more excited to see what Ryan Johnson does in his own trilogy. Absolutely. Because he's literally clearing he's he's basically cleansing the palette and giving you a fresh start to go forward with a larger Star Wars universe here. And basically telling you, hey, everything you know, like there's literally a point in this film. Where you can literally go, oh, like he's literally wiping out the history. Yes, he's yeah. telling you, forget that stuff. We need to look forward. We need to look. We need to look for, towards the future, and that's what we're going to do here from now on. Like that literally happens in the film, and just by seeing, I, I, I think some people aren't going to understand that exactly until it's too late because they're going to go, oh wait, no, it's too similar. Like anytime I see somebody say that it's too, it relies too heavily on. Being like Empire Strikes Back or being, I can tell right then they didn't get the film. Right. And that they, they weren't, they were only looking at the surface level of what some aesthetics were. But once you look underneath that, you can see they are completely wiping out what certain things are. Like, I I wouldn't be surprised if going forward in that trilogy that, that he does, we don't have Jedi and Sith, but you're going to see lightsabers. You're going to see the Force. You're going to see a whole bunch of other stuff. They might create a whole new 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 set of things. Like it's is a it's a funny, interesting thing with with, set of, with Jedi and Sith. They're really just two religions, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's the thing about the Sith and the Jedi that I never understood because reading the um and this is you know a bit nerdy for y'all that didn't read the expanded universe back in the day, but <laughs> the best stuff was in the expanded universe, right? And that's mm-hmm. where, that's where they had all the extra stuff about. Um, like Luke's son and Leia, Luke's Le- Leia and Han's twins and all that. Um, and I see them trying to adapt that, and it's making me very happy. Like some of the books I read were on that screen, you know, just in different ways. And uh, I really appreciate Ryan Johnson for bringing in the stuff that he did bring in. Um, as far as uh, with the Jedi, because. Jedi do some other shit that I've never seen before. Is have you ever seen some of the stuff that they did in this movie? Oh no, yeah. But that's but, that, but that's the other thing too. It's like I, I, I again going with the whole you know let the past die thing, and and you don't you think you know how this is gonna this is not gonna go how you think it's gonna go. So many of us like when 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 Lucasfilm when Disney bought Lucasfilm one of the first things that Disney did was says. All that is in the universe stuff, throwing it out. Right. And people lost their fucking minds. They lost their minds. They're like, oh my gosh, we can't do that. How are you going to do that? How are you, where are you going to pull your stuff from? And this is like, we're going to make our own stuff now. Right. If we, if, we, if we get rid of that it's in the universe, we're not beholden to any of that stuff. We can now tell our any story. There are infinite stories now. We no longer have to worry about connecting anything. And that's what this does. Like after Force Awakens, you now have the last Jedi, and the last Jedi goes, "All right, everything that you think you know, and, and based on the Jedi and based on the Sith and things like that, we're gonna get rid of." Because here's the thing, technically, 
technically, I'm not even sure if Kylo was ever really a Sith. I don't think he was. That's the, that's thing. the thing. They so, never say anything so, about that. Right. So, like, there, I, I don't know. And so, if you take that away, then what is what? Then what are we going here? Right. You know, is 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 Ray even a Jedi? You know, it's like we call the film the Last Jedi, but at any point, is she really like she has a lightsaber? But is she really like who knows? Like we we don't have like when when you start thinking about this film and thinking about you know what the original trilogy was and what they've done with Force Awakens and what they've done with we don't know jack shit. We we don't like because all the stuff that we think is similar to the original is kind of gone. Like they don't have any of that stuff there. And there's a there's actually a moment really at one point where um, Snoke says something to Kylo at the very beginning of the film, and you realize he's also has that idea because he he does something. And you're like oh, and mm-hmm. then you realize that he never has that thing with him the rest of the movie. You're like right. oh, shit. Yeah, that actually makes sense now. And so. I think that's going to be the thing that is so good with this film is it's literally become a launching point for not just episode nine, but now the 10, universe. 11, 12, and, and any other outside of that numbered. Here's the thing. They don't have to all be numbered films now. They've already seen that they've done at least one a non, non-numbered film that was a prequel. So how well that turned out. Lucasfilm could do anything now with this franchise. Hell, they're going to do, this is going to do that, that TV show. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That could, I mean, that could tie in that, you know, they, or it could just expand the universe even more. It could be a Knights of the Old Republic TV show. Yes. That, yes. that one, that, that one planet you go to, that opens up so many different. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so much you could tell with that I story there. You know what? I didn't even think about that, but hell yeah. You could do so much there. <laughs> God, that'd be good. Um, So for me, uh, one of the outstanding moments or uh outstanding performances uh adam driver uh, i was shocked like i wasn't as like i didn't think kylo ren was bad um in the force awakens but i actively kind of like kylo ren in this and i talked to chris about this yesterday i need to explain why he can't be a part of the villain agenda dog because yeah, I might I might have my agendas lined up for him, dog. Look, he could he could be a part of it. He's still too whiny. He is a you little. Can't be, he is a little whiny. You can't be a, you can't be building an agenda and be a whiny. Like we need we need winners. We need people that are solid. Like he's just too whiny. He is a little and, whiny. And, 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 I, and I think that's what makes him a good. That's what makes him good in this film because he's not Vader. Right. But he wants to be. He's the <laughs> he's the whiny dude, bro that wonders why people don't give him the same attention and same respect as everybody else. Because you know, you know, who's, you know, who's my d- villain agenda in this film? Dumb, dumb hell Gleason. Uh, oh, Hux. yes. Yes. Hux, Hux can be villain, is agenda. villain agenda. Cause he's going to be looking at, 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 he looks at Kylo. Like, are you at your fucking mind? Right. Like, nigga, you're, are you crazy? You're, <laughs> you're a little child. Right. Like you, you, you have you are so unprepared for what you're doing, and I think that's that's why that's why uh, uh, he can't be a villain agenda because all he really is is a hurt child. But he's not. Yeah. But this is the thing I'll say. Um, he had a he had a Magneto like origin story. <laughs> like if you wake up, you know, ah shit. Um, yeah. He just <laughs> if that shit happened you, to you, you right? No, you're. <laughs> I, I'm sympathetic. I am a little sympathetic, but he. But unlike Magneto, eh, he kind of had it coming. He definitely, <laughs> like, he, de- like, he definitely kind of had it coming. You know, it's it's like, you know, like with Magneto, like Magneto was a child and went through the Holocaust and everything. Like, so it's like, no, like you got to be on the side of of Eric on this one. With Ben, you're like, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that was wrong, and maybe you should have talked it out. But you, yeah, I think you kind of had that one. Like I'm, I'm victim blaming here. I'm gonna victim blame <laughs> on Ben here a little bit, and say that he kind of, you know, kind of had it coming <laughs> a little bit. So, but I, I will say I like Kylo a lot more in this. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, I feel like he, his character progressed. 
Um, and we still don't know what his arc is. Um, and I think that was one of the masterful things that Ryan Johnson did. I think it's we we you get to understand more of why he's the way he is. Like right. I put it, I, I called him whiny. He is whiny, and he does feel like a he feels like he's like a, a, a child acting out. But I understand why he's like that now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it makes sense. You know, he feels he feels betrayed. He feels unloved. He's he's struggling to find. He really. It's so funny. Both him and Ray are very are very similar in that they're both struggling to find their place in the world. Mm -hmm. It's just that. And again, it, it parallels real life. It's like you have the man who acts out, gets really emotional, lashes out, gets violent and stuff like that. Whereas you have the woman who becomes nurturing, becomes more understanding. She becomes empathetic, you know, but still strong. And somehow she becomes she's stronger because of her empathy, because of her sympathy, because of her wanting to do the right thing and not lashing out with her emotions. That's the thing. You right. Know? Absolutely. Um, and 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 it's so funny. Yeah, it's like I don't and you know, it's not even really a spoiler. Like I've always thought this. Like I've always thought that it's an interesting thing that you see uh what's happening with Ray is you know, all this talk about balancing the force, it's mm -hmm. like, well, maybe what you needed was just have a woman, woman who wasn't technically, you know, raised under the system that was basically built by men. A message, you know, message. Because uh, I mean, it's, it's it's right. I mean, that's what you see here, and you're like, maybe she's the balance in the force. <laughs> it's it's so interesting to see, and, and this goes back to goes back uh, to all the strong uh, female leads that we had. Like, it is just. I don't think I think Disney knows exactly what they're doing at this point. Um, of course, they do. yeah, hundred percent. This is two movies in a row, actually three movies in a row, where there's been a woman as a lead who doesn't take a lot of shit, who knows what she wants, and is not taking any shit from any man. And I love it. You know, you, mm -hmm. if you think about The Force Awakens, if you think about Rogue One, Rogue One was basically a woman leading everybody to death, you know, like as a, a to do one of the biggest things in the Star Wars universe. Like nobody ever talks about that type of stuff. So, like, I'm I'm just impressed by Disney, um, and what they've continued to do with their, uh, with their universes. Um, you got anything else that? Uh... So I'm, I'm I know I'm, I might be in the minority on this one, and I'm not going to go into details because again, it's big spoilers. But I actually like uh, the reveal. Who, if we go with yes, yes, if we go with this being truthful, I actually like the reveal of who Ray's parents are. Absolutely. If yeah. if you take it with a grain of salt, but I actually like it because um, I know a lot of people might be disappointed because their fan theories might not be uh, real, but I think that goes to why it had to be this way. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that I like, and, and to expand past just Ray, I think I like the fact that a lot of the fucking fan theories are wrong. I, I've, I said this on uh, the internet right after I uh, saw it. I said all your all your Snoke theories, all your fan theories are fucking wrong, all of them. Yeah, don't, don't even go in and, expecting any of them to be right. And and I think that and 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 honestly, I think that's good because, and I think this goes it's, it's, shout out to, um, and I think Marvel started to do this as well, but they really locked it down from the big get go with Lucas Films. They don't leak anything. Nope. I don't, and so I don't know how they what do happens either. is people try to parse things through the through uh, a grainy you know set photo or a trailer or something like that. And here, if you're building your fan theories off of a trailer, you are already lost. Especially because especially if it's a Disney trailer, they're lying to you. Yes, they're cutting the trailers in certain ways. Like I gotta go back and watch it, but I'm pretty sure like ninety percent of that trailer. Uh, the one of those trailers is cut from like maybe the first quarter of the fucking movie. It is. It's cut from the first fifteen to twenty minutes. Right, right. And so you don't know what's going on, and so you built these entire theories off of that, and you're going to be wrong. And and the reason why I think that that needs to happen is because 
if you're building your fan theories and you think you know what you're gonna what's gonna happen when you walk in there, you're already setting yourself up for failure because when it's not there, you're gonna be disappointed. Yes. So what you need to do is get all that out of your mind, go in for like here's the thing. I don't I don't like to read a bunch of these sites that go with the fans. I, I try not to I, I I avoid them. Because they're usually wrong. And what happens is some of them get me thinking one thing and I'll go in the film and I don't get it. And I go, man, that wasn't good. But then I go home and start thinking about it. I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. It's not that it wasn't good. It's that I was wanting something else. And that's my fault for getting myself hyped up for something that was never going to be the story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say if you think you have a fan theory, stop. Just let it go. It's probably it's. Nine, think to yourself, ninety percent is not right. It's it will, no, it's not going to be right. It just just throw that out there. It's not ninety percent. That's that shit's not going to be right. No. <laughs> like they they and this is like this is somebody that came in. I have my own theories and like I think I've talked about them on the nerd off before. Mm-hmm. Like oh yeah, I think this is going to happen. This I, you know I'm somebody that's deep into the lore, um and and kind of tries to keep up on these things. Like I've read the books and um, comics, by the way. Um, the Phasma comic was on sale. I don't know if it's still on sale for Comicsology. Get it if it is. If not, still get it. Yeah. Um, all the Star Wars um, comics are on sale right now. Last time I checked. Um, so go get it and get Vader down while you're at it. Um, but yeah, man, like the the way that he that they lay out the secrets, like that third act. I was tired by the end of that third act. Like mm-hmm. I, I literally and. This movie will make you do something, especially if you're a big Star Wars head. I walked out of the theater not knowing if I liked it. And the reason being is because I needed to actually process it. Like, it's 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 a lot in this movie. Um, and overall, I, I just can't speak highly enough of it, man. I think that this is, and I don't, I don't want to say this lightly, but I think it's the best Star Wars movie we've ever had. Um, oh yeah, no. this, this is coming from somebody who dressed up as an Ewok <laughs> when he was three <laughs> years old. Damn it! Like I get it, you know, it's better than Empire by far. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, for, I'll, I'll 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 stop. But like, there's a lot of things that are better than Empire mm-hmm. because you know it's been a long time and people hold that film up to a lot hard. People forget what happens in the middle of that film, but okay. We always think about what happened. We think what happened sandwich in between uh, Luke, I'm your father and the battle of Hoth. It's the whole middle of the film where Lucas is like cross training with Yoda with a puppet on his back. Yes. But you know, anyway, I, I didn't want to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this today. You, I'm going to leave it alone. I didn't want to say anything. I'm, sorry, I'm, trying, to, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to be nice. I'm I to be recently, nice I recently watched empire. And kind of had the same thought. <laughs> I was like, like you know what? It, you know what? It, it's it's nostalgia, and and yes, and and this is why I was trying because somebody asked me if like, do I think it's going to get like a three hundred million dollar opening weekend? I laughed and said no. And the reason for that is not because it's not good or not better. It's that you're never going to the first time you watch Empire, you're never going to get that feeling again. It's like what we, we you and Rod talk about this before with uh, Avengers. Mm-hmm. The first time you see the Avengers on on screen together you're never going to after the next film no matter what no matter how good it is you're never going to get that that feeling of first again so when you had empire strikes back it's really the most of darth vader you got because you got a little bit of him in the first in, in episode four but and, and if you know anything about how they put how lucas put together episode four they were kind of winging it as they went along anyway right yeah so empire is really the first of the Star Wars films that's actually put together like a Star Wars film. It's also the one not directed by fucking George Lucas. So mm. that also should tell you some things, <laughs> but you're never going to not get some of those moments. So you're never going to get that moment again of seeing, uh, the, the, you know, the taking down the walkers. You're never going to get that moment again of Luke. I am your father. And that Holy shit moment. Once you have that and you get it that first time, that's why people think it's always the best because you're never going to get that moment ever again. No matter how good any of these things are, you're never going to get that moment again. It doesn't mean that, that it's better than all those other films. It just means that that moment that you had is that moment. It's never right. going to get better than that. And so, yeah, as long as you as long as you put that put it in that context, 
then you'll understand that clearly, yeah. I mean, some these other films, like the three Star Wars films they've done under, under Disney, and Force Awakens, Rogue One, and now Last Jedi are infinitely better than everything yes. that they did back in the 70s. It just, it just is. It has to be. It, it, they, they are. It's, the acting is better. I mean, just I mean, and, that, and that's what gets me when people say, "Oh no, there's no way these women better." I'm like, acting wise, none of. I mean, look, I love Carrie Fisher, I love Mark Hamill, but in those films, look, they were all like, they were doing the best they could. That was great, but like the best actor all out of all of them at that point was Harrison Ford. Right, and he had just started acting not too long ago. Right, you know, and so it's like, yeah, like they 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 became these large icons. They they got better. But when you see them today in today's films, they're acting, they act circles around their younger selves. Right. And so on that alone, visuals, infinitely better. Uh, the way, what John Williams is doing with the, the score and things like that, infinitely better. So when people tell me it's better and I'm like, no, 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 you're only comparing, you're only comparing on an emotional level, but on a technical level, there is no way in hell you can tell me that those films are better. They're just not even story wise. Like, when people tell me, oh, no, the original trilogy is be- better, and I go, you do realize in that first film, Luke, the reason why Luke and Leia kiss is they're not brother and sister in that film. Yes. that I, I try to tell people that all the time because people get grossed out about it. I'm like, no, they changed it. <laughs> yeah, they changed. Like, at the end, like, Darth Vader was never supposed to be a big deal. Matter he, of fact, if I remember He wasn't even in, supposed they, to be in the other movies. They, Right, he wasn't supposed to be in other movies, and they weren't even. I don't even think they were supposed to have Jedi and Sith. Hmm. Like, it, I, I, if I remember, like you got, I, I'm one. There's got to be a documentary out there on somewhere on the original Star Wars. But if you just go and read some of the stuff, like when you read what the original plan was, and that George Lucas was making up as he went along, and so it became something bigger, and we all took it and made it better. And I think that's what people need to rely on. It's like, yes, these films are better. Because they know what we want at this point. Right. They're not making it up as they go along. Like these, oh, those other films, <laughs> they're making it up. I remember a few years ago, I had uh, Jay from the Neuropocalypse and Michael on, and I blew their minds when I told them, I was like, listen, here's how I know the original trilogy is not uh, the best out of any Star Wars we're going to now. Go back and watch the original trilogy. Read the opening scroller <laughs> and then tell me that the opening scroller does not describe a better movie than the one you're about to watch. Yes. I mean, all of them did that. <laughs> all the scrollers. Remember, right. Remember, the the uh, 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 Rogue One is the opening scroller to A New Hope. That's what that movie. Week and, and, and Rogue One was amazing. Rogue One is the opening scroller can, can you, to, to, can, the, to some, the original trilogy. Yo, Kathleen, so, Ka- yeah. Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy was like, look, you read this right here, go make this now. <laughs> this if is you great. Read, yeah, if you read comic books, go read um, that dark, that 20, 25 yeah, issue Darth Kieran, Vader yeah. run that Karen Gillen, Gillen wrote. That is what takes place in between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Because if you look at if you go watch those films, you know, there's a there's a huge difference between what Darth Vader is and 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 a New Hope, and the the new role he seems to be playing in Empire Strikes Back, and they never really explain how he got that new role. That 25 issues that was written in 2015 explains how he got that new role, and it makes it more sense. Like everybody's done a better job of explaining the story can now we understand what the big picture is right everybody's done a better job since then it's like and it's fine like like i said i love the original trilogy they're on tv i'm gonna watch them because they they have a special meaning to me but they're not better films guys they're just not uh, yeah i mean let's let's be completely they can't be yeah they can't be it's it's all nostalgia but you know this i'm not gonna argue with y'all about it you know y'all can y'all can have that one but just know that this movie is going to make all the money when I say all the money, I mean like print my own money, all the money. Um, I really think it might hit close to two oh five open a weekend, bro. Two oh five, two oh nine, man. What you think? I think it can hit the two. Like I, I think it's, I think it's just so hard. And the reason yeah. why I, think, I, I so I told somebody today, 
I wouldn't be surprised if it gets under that. And the reason why it doesn't mean that it's underperforming or anything like that. It's just that, um, one, you got to think about it. There have been a string of good movies, particularly from Disney, uh, the last two months. <laughs> yeah. So you had Thor, you, then you had Coco, and now you're coming out with The Force Awakens. It's also Christmas time. People's financial situations might hit. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that might lead into it not hitting to this opening weekend, uh, just because of you know the price of tickets and things right. like that, and taking the whole fam. So it could, but it's gonna have legs. Oh yeah, this I I'm going to see the movie um, Saturday, and I'm going to see it Sunday. Just yeah, I got I'm actually on Sunday. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I had to get one for 3D, and then I haven't seen because that the screener they gave us was. Just a basic um, screen. So I want to see it in IMAX and I want to see it in 3D. Those are my two yeah. things. And I don't yeah. want to see it in 3D IMAX. I want them to be separate. So, yeah. So. Yeah. I'm going to a giant IMAX theater on uh, Sunday to see it. Got the tickets already. I got the tickets like months ago. Yo. I, that's, how, that's, how, that's how I know. Like Again, that's why doing the reviews of this movie is actually kind of like, it's just hearing us talk. Right. Because you already know you're going to go see it. Because... I hadn't even gotten the screener for it yet, and I had already bought my ticket for the Sunday because I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, yeah." So I know I'm gonna like it, and I know I'm gonna go. So dog, yeah. dog, they 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 slow rolled me on the screener. So I emailed them was like, "Hey, are you guys doing any screeners for Star Wars?" And they was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I'm sorry, and sent it out. I was like, "Oh God, thank God." Oh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. They um so they I actually at this point because I'm also in the Washington Area Film Critic Association. Yeah. I, and then our most of our screeners are in Baltimore, but the because I'm in I'm in uh, the Watson area folk critics, so I can do the ones in DC. So they hit us up and told us, "Hey, we're not doing one in Baltimore this year. Uh, this year, we are going to do it in DC." So I'm like, "Thank God, I'm a little bit closer to that." And so, but they invited people that were from that usually go to Baltimore to the DC one. Man, that is the first time, and it was at two o'clock in the mm-hmm. afternoon. Ours was that's the first too. time. Yeah, that's the first time ever that I've been to a two o'clock screener in the middle of the week, and it's been packed. Dog. Like it was packed. Dog. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, nobody's missing this. So Yo, okay. We I sat in the middle row, like where the critics usually sit. I looked back and up and down, the whole movie theater was damn near filled. I was like, mm-hmm. I and when I went to go see Pirates of the Caribbean, I tell you it wasn't like that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I'll tell you that damn much. So um final thoughts. Any final thoughts you got about the movie? Um, we're not gonna say what we didn't like because that fucking nitpicks. Like it wouldn't be yeah. much. Yeah, it, it, it'd be nitpicks. Like at this point, like there were some things you're like, oh, I wish I had gotten more of that. But then you look at it, the the film's two hours and thirty minutes. Yes. And I'm like, I can't add. No, they did what they had to do. Um, final thoughts is, I, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited to see what more they do with this franchise. I'm really excited for nine, but I'm super excited. And and like I don't know if you saw, like it just came out. Apparently, Ryan Johnson's also. He really wants to see more diverse uh, directors for the series. Like he's he's working on the uh, on the trilogies. It doesn't mean that he's directing them. Exactly. He might just be writing them. Right. So what up? And and like so he wrote the hell out of this one. Right. So I would love it. And look, I saw the picture of Kathleen Kennedy and Ava together. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm just saying, if don't be surprised if Wrinkle and if Wrinkle on Time does a really good job and gets really good reviews. Don't be surprised if Ava gets a call up. And she gets called up to a Star Wars film because once Disney gets their hooks into you, it's over. They don't. They don't want to let you go. I mean, so, Ava helped JJ with a uh, Force Awakens, didn't she? Like she gave some. Just saying, <laughs> episode. I'm just saying, Ep- episode, episode ten. 10 di- di- you know, directed by Ava DuVernay. I'm. I'm just saying. Now you want to talk. Now, now you want to talk about a 300 million dollar opening weekend. Oh boy. Uh, Oh boy! <laughs> because because, because, that, because that's the thing. Like in order to get, the, and that's why I real. In order to get that next boost in 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 um in the box office to hit that next breaking level, you have to do something to you have to do something revolutionary to hit that right. Like for Avengers, it was okay. This is the first time we've ever gotten a a a a a, a tentpole film on a cinematic universe. It's the first time we've ever had the Avengers together ever. Okay, when you got, um, you know, uh, uh, The Force Awakens, this is the first film with Lucasfilms under Disney. Okay, you're going to make a, a shit ton of money. You now do the same thing, and you now say, okay, we're going to get 
this new trilogy, complete new again. And also we have a black woman directing it who is like one of the big names in black and, and, and black women directing right now. That's going to be the next thing to help you break to the next level of, okay, yeah, you're now going to get a super ton of interest in there. And now that becomes a film that people can't miss. Like that's the other thing too. The, the reason why I don't think it, it, it why it, it could come a little lower. Some people are going to be like, yeah, I want to see it, but I already know it's going to be good. I already know what to expect. I don't have to see it right now. No. You know, it, and one thing that might change that with this film is the fact that so many people are saying that this film is so different and it's like the best, like that might get people to, to, to now go, okay, I have to see it this weekend now. But a lot of times what's happening is people are like, okay, I can wait a week or I can wait two weeks. I can wait a couple of days. But when you get something like, you know, the first, the first black woman to direct a Star Wars film. Yeah, yeah no. that's become something that breaks you into it. And now everybody feels like they have to go see it. So they can be a part of the conversation because as human beings, that's what we want. We we feel like we have to be a part of the conversation. And so you have to go and see that opening weekend. And that's what going to drive up that 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 number. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm God, if Ava did a Star Wars movie. Oh, boy. The amount of money that they would make just off the blacks <laughs> would be <laughs> ridiculous. Um, for me, I'll say that everybody needs to calm down. Um, it is an amazing movie. No worries. They did us right again. Um, and I'm like, Chris, I'm excited about the future, man. Like I said it earlier, they just opened up the things that the Jedi do in this movie have never fucking been done. Mm -hmm. And there are little hints to stuff that don't make any sense at first that Ryan Johnson is trying to show you like the extent of what a Jedi can do. Um, so I, like I said, I'm ex excited about that. The only thing I will say is I want more lightsaber battles and that's just me being nitpicky because the ones we got were fucking amazing. They were mm -hmm. off the chain and visceral too. Like they made you feel like you were right there. You notice, did you notice what they did, Chris? Like with the shots, the shot composure? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's funny. It's, I, I kept saying this in my reviews, familiar, but different. Mm -hmm. Like you can like this feels like a Star Wars film. It looks like a Star Wars film. Um, but there's been two different direct three different directions. If you, if you count uh, Rogue One. Right. But they all, but they're all they all have their own different style, but they feel the same way. And you're right. Ryan Johnson. Can you think about it? He did Looper. So it's like yeah. when you think about what he did with let, that. Like there's a lot of similarities and a lot of um the way he composed some of the shots. And you feel like you're right up in there. Yeah, you absolutely. know, and uh, like there is a big, like the like you said, there's not a lot of star uh, lightsaber battles, but there is one in there, and, and it's um yeah, buddy, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's something there, yo. It's it's a lot. Oh, and I I'll, final thought also shout out to Laura Dern who yes. played um uh, uh Vice Admiral I think Holdo, um uh, great role. Yeah, she was acting, man. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, with that being said, this has been another episode of Rune Reviews, Rune Recaps, this time for Star Wars The Last Jedi. I want to thank my homie Chris. Where can they find you at, bro? Uh, you can get us on the website, mtrnetwork.net. Uh, if you type MTR Network into iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google, you'll get some. You get all of our shows will pop up that way as well. And then we're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash mtrnetwork. So. And go subscribe to his premium, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a subscriber been since the very beginning. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. And they do good work over there, man. Um, Appreciate it. Chris, it was a pleasure having you on. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace.